Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be about the dark side of being a penetration tester. But please don't let the title of the video deceive you, because being a penetration tester is awesome and it is my dream job. But I think there is a romantic idea about what it's like to be a penetration tester or a ethical hacker as you prefer to call it. So that idea is what we are going to try to clarify on this video. So let's just get started. The first thing that comes to mind is that everyone makes mistakes and that's true, we are all humans after all, but here the context really matters. When you're performing a penetration test, usually there's not much room for mistakes because most of the times you will be dealing with sensitive information and critical systems and applications, so a little mistake can cause serious problems on business operations. And another example is that imagine you're performing a penetration test and for some reason you were not able to find a hidden vulnerability. And this can happen because you're working with limited conditions, you have limited access, limited knowledge and you also have limited time to work with. So many of the times you won't be able to find everything there is to find. But imagine that one week after you deliver your pen test report, the client gets attacked. But they realize that you should have been able to find that one vulnerability before the attacker. Now that's a big problem because that attack can be catastrophic for the business. And so being able to manage and to deal with this kind of pressure can be a little bit tricky. Now, there is also the other side of the coin, which is also very interesting. If you think about it, there is nothing that is perfectly secured or 100% secure. So, there should be always some vulnerabilities or weaknesses that you can find in a given system or application, right? But then, if you think about it, imagine that you just finished a penetration test and for some reason you weren't capable of finding any higher critical vulnerabilities then it could get really hard to deal with some thoughts like was this system or application really well protected or am I just not good enough? And then you can start doubting your own capabilities, doubting yourself, your own skills and this can lead to a much more serious problem which I think we all deal with at some level which is the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome refers to an internal experience of believing that you're not as competent as the others perceive you to be. And this can strike you very hard sometimes. And I don't know if it is because I'm still a junior, but there's some times where nothing seems to work. You're trying out everything you know and even stuff you don't know if it applies for the situation just because you're desperate. And then you just start doubting yourself once again and thinking that you're not as good as you should be. So if this happens to you, make sure you talk with somebody about it. And I'm very lucky to have the best team in the world. So whenever I'm struggling with something, I'm comfortable enough to say that I don't know how to do it. But I always make sure I show that I will put in the work in order to learn it. And that's very important. The first thing that I would like to say here is that burnout is not exclusively related with pen testing or even cybersecurity, of course, but with the amount of stuff that you have to learn and with the pressure that comes with um, getting the best opportunities and not wanting to get stuck behind, burnout is definitely something that can happen to everyone who's working or studying in this field. And last year I got very close to a burnout around the summer. I was waking up at 7 a.m. and going to bed around 2 or 3 a.m. every day because I was working full time, I was finishing my first year of my master's degree and I was also studying for certifications. And trying to do all of this at the same time led to an absolute disaster. I ended up failing a certification exam I shouldn't have failed. Um, I actually got decent grades on my master's degree, but not the best grades as I always aim for. But most importantly, uh, my body started to give me signs that things were not okay. And I don't want to go too deep into this topic right now, but maybe I'll do a video about it more down the line if you think that would be helpful to someone. Now, 
my advice to everyone who's trying to be successful in this field is even though that sometimes you have to work hard and push through it and trust me there will be some sleepless nights um, your rest and your family time and your mental health should always be your top priorities and also if you're interested in this topic I would recommend you to watch Cybersecurity Meg's video where she talks about burnout and mental health in cybersecurity Many people also think that being a penetration tester and ethical hacker is like they show you one of movies. You just type really fast on your keyboard and then just press enter and then that's it. You just hack the NSA using HTML or something like that. And that's totally far from the reality. During a penetration test, you'll find things that you've never seen before. So you'll have to do a lot of research and you'll have to read a lot of documentation. And finally, you will also have to write a report after you do every assessment. And that's actually the way you're providing value to the clients because finding vulnerabilities and exploiting them is cool and all, but can you prioritize those vulnerabilities? Can you explain your methodology? And can you give them mitigation solutions based on the client's reality? And so, a lot of people struggle with this because you can be the ultimate hacker ninja warrior but if you can't write a proper report that helps the client improve their security posture then your technical knowledge won't be that useful after all. And that's it for today's video, I hope I didn't discourage anyone from pursuing this career path because these are all things that we can manage and deal with, especially if you're part of a great team, which is my case. It is very important to feel that you have the support you need when you're struggling with something. I think that really changes everything for the best. Now, I was wondering, should I make a video regarding the best things about being a penetration tester? And if that's something that you would be interested in watching, please let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!